Hi guys, how are we doing? We're at the fantastic Westin Hotel this week on the Abu Dhabi National Course. Uh, we've got some group coaching starting tomorrow, but we thought we'd take the opportunity tonight under the floodlit driving range, myself and Sam, to share a tutorial with you, working with those ground reaction forces and recognising the movement the body makes to create these forces. So it's okay feeling pushing the ground, it's okay feeling jumping, but it's like, well, how do we actually recognise a functional movement and a functional use or recruitment of these forces? So we're going to use another sport to tap into the forces that we need for this sport. And we're going to use boxing because boxing is another sport that uses the ground and it's tapping into that kinetic chain. So once we start to recognise how the body moves with the club in place, we can just let the whole thing go. So we don't get too focused on the arms and the hands and the club. We're actually thinking more about the forces and letting the arms and the hands and the club, which is the, the end of the chain, let them react, just like throwing a ball. This should be completely reactionary, uninhibited. So any kind of focus of your attention on this part of the chain is going to start to introduce unnecessary tension, which increases inertia on the system and actually stops you using the ground. If you're trying to think about peak positions in a golf swing, whilst trying to use the ground, there's too much interference, complete contradictory movements. That subconsciously creates a different tension and it's the tension that's so important. But we're gonna get the body working in a way where it has no other option but to use the ground the way we want to in the golf swing. My very faithful assistant, Sam, is gonna be the bag man for tonight. Ground reaction forces are quite popular and on trend at the minute. But it's hard to actually apply and feel these without overthinking or consciously trying to drive the action because it's never quite the same, is it? No, the underpinning biomechanics is so important, but the skill acquisition element behind it is absolutely necessary to tap into these biomechanics. It's okay thinking about movements, positions, but that is manipulation, it becomes voluntary. The upper chain has to be involuntary. It's okay thinking about the lower body. You can still throw a ball thinking about your lower body. So you can still think about your feet and throw a ball. But you can't throw the ball thinking about your hand slows the whole thing down so when you go to the end of the chain it starts to affect the whole chain in reverse and then it starts to essentially slow down the whole chain from back to front so from the end all the way back down it slows you down we want to speed it up i'm sure no one's ever stood on this practice ground at westin i mean i mean i stood with boxing gloves on and a, and a bag to hurt and a pad but it's the first time for everything isn't there we're getting some really funny looks but it'll all make sense when they start seeing the swing so guys what we're going to do first we're going to talk about backswing so we're getting a setup position so it's basically it's an uppercut okay slightly behind here so i'm uppercutting this way now from here to uppercut we can even come closer so i've got to go from a low position here and push off the ground rotated to then punch the bag so from here we're punching Okay, so what we've got now is we've got an unload from the ground. We've got that initial load to then push, which unloads us. So the pushing action unloads the body. Now I can use that force and transfer it through the chain. But just by thinking of boxing, the intention of punching this suddenly taps me into the use of the ground. So this is where we want to get the momentum from in the golf swing. Once we've felt this, we can then move into the change of direction. So once we're in our back swing, we've got to change the direction. How do we do that? Well, essentially we're unwinding to create an active recoil. We want to be focusing on the downward element. So we're going to go this way, down. So punching down and notice how the body's reacted. We're now loading into the floor and then starting to push up. So we're now starting to load and starting to feel this push in the opposite direction to get a force in this direction. Now this is obviously an intentional punch. We're not trying to punch with the golf club in our hand and extend the arm. Remember, this is gonna be involuntary with the arms. We're thinking about what's happening with the legs and the pelvis. We're not thinking about the arms. So when you're doing this exercise, this is really not of any consideration. We've gone up, we've changed direction, we're shifting. Now we're really gonna to start to push and unload. Look what the body does in an effort to create force in this direction. the opposite now I'm pushing 
And what this exercise is doing is directing your force vectors in the directions required for functional movement chains, for that resultant functional movement pattern. This is exactly where we're going in the golf swing. And then we can go into a finish and feel the full unload. So now we can really feel ourselves jump off the floor using the forefeet. Think about what part of the feet you're using. Use that mindful awareness throughout these exercises of what is actually taking place. This is how we're gonna create these attachments. You've gotta be mindful of what you're experiencing in, effort, in an effort to create that memory. So it's here, and then look how relaxed the arm is because that gives you speed. That speed, if this is rigid, you're not gonna get that same force. This has to be relaxed, and then you can start to really get some power. So we're starting to feel the journey. Thanks, Sam, that was awesome. He's a good bag man, and he should be. <laughs> Should be in Tyson Fury's corner, really. <laughs> so we're going to get the golf club now. Now we can put it into a bit of practice. Talk a little bit more about what we've just experienced. So Sam could talk you through a little bit of what I'm going to do, what he's noticing about the action. Now I'm not the perfect model by any stretch of, of a golf swing. What I'm going to try and do, recognise how the body wants to move in response to these forces, and how I can best use these to swing the golf club in the easiest, most powerful way that relates to the task of swinging a golf club now because that was boxing, now this is swinging a club. It's a different task. The club's moving around the body in a very different way to where the boxing club was. So I'm gonna hit a few shots. I'm gonna work on it in stages. I'm gonna just think about the backswing. And then just hit a few shots doing this. So we'll talk about tempo, Sam, what you think I should be doing. You talk to the camp, tell the guys at home. Can you tell the guys at home what we should be doing? Just to, just to maybe yeah, I mean, what, explore what, it. What was noticeable about the, the boxing glove exercise was kind of the, the force velocity relationship how quick and how dynamic an impulse this is and of course we're creating high force over a short space of time in the golf swing so that does require a certain tempo and timing alongside of it as well so that's something i'd definitely be exploring the, the timing of this movement when we start to overthink the swing <coughs> it can really slow us down it's like you said it becomes more voluntary like marcus has Disgust. We want it kind of involuntary. We want it. He wants to be speed there. He doesn't want to be slow. And too deliberate. That's where those forces coming from. The ground, from the legs, the lower limbs. Really, that shot. Really, the the good work has been done in the exercise. Really, because if your attention is in the right place, then that's allowing you to develop the awareness around what is the body actually doing to create these forces and transfer them. So this is where, in the backswing. We've got to get these forces through to the club in a certain time. Exploring the speed of the backswing, the speed of these forces, are really going to find a sweet spot. What's too fast, what's too slow, what's just right for you as well. Now I'm going to go into the downswing. So I'm going to feel that change of direction. And it's a very different feeling now. As you can see, it produces a very different outcome. Hit the ground before the ball but I'm not used to moving down like that. So that's loads more speed. Struck it well, but I'm not reacting any different. So I'm not getting distracted emotionally and attached to these outcomes, thinking that the movement was good because that shot was good, because I can't repeat, I'm gonna repeat that again. Feeling this change of direction, that's what I'm focusing on. And that's probably the best golf shot I could ever hit, but no different in my approach to what I did when I when I hit it heavy. So I hit one two inches before the ball. Doesn't really matter because we're practicing. We're exploring, we're having fun. It's important to have fun, Sam, isn't it? It is, yeah. And like Marcus said so well there, it's regulating your emotional state on in practice, isn't it? Because yeah. very quickly your, your practice session can run away from you because you're emotionally reacting to every shot and especially if you're working on your swing you're going to really limit yourself to be able to explore them because you're always using the outcome to affirm good movement but like marcus is there good or bad the intention remains the same it's just building some awareness to the ground for me i need it to be much more upbeat that tempo so I've got, to do that i can feel the force i'm applying this way and i've got so much more control over my ball flight. So I'm recognizing what's taking place. I'm not getting emotionally attached to that, but I'm recognizing what's going on. Sam nailed it with force velocity. The force I'm creating, I'm cre I feel like I'm creating more force, but the velocity, I can get it through here, through the upper body much quicker. I've got to get up more. I've already got enough shift. You're going to find your perfect combination between shift, rotation, and vertical. This is how we're doing it, by using a different sport. 
to tap into these same chains. Now I'm going to go the other way. So now I can remember what I did, boxing, and I'm going to, it's as if I'm trying to punch down into the ground in front of the ball. We've used throwing in the past, okay? That's fine, but it's not just from here a straight uppercut. Because from here, this is not a functional movement for golf because we're applying forces through our hand path in this direction, okay? With a club that's behind. So we're using the very similar joint actions, tapping into these forces to create these joint actions, ultimately the sequence that you're gonna recognize. So it's this feeling now. So now I can feel this moving back and up. So I've gone that way, now I'm gonna be moving back and up with my center of mass to release freely and later. Don't have to release early because I've got the forces acting on me to let this sequence go later. So bang on, divert after the ball, and it was a really nice flight, good strike. So I got the results I wanted through reverse engineering the whole process because I've developed an awareness how I'm using the ground with my body, which is the lower body. And then this involuntary action does the job with the original intention of striking the ball, then the ground. That's even better. So this strike here, this divots after the ball. And I can feel the speed, I can feel the speed starting to increase. We're warming up of course as well. And I take some warming up, I'm like an old Austin Maestro if you remember those, I'm showing my age now. Now I'm gonna go into the finish. So now I'm really gonna, remember this action is not this. The club's gonna still be behind me when I'm doing this. So we can now release and I'm gonna, basically I'm ramping up the speed. I can't ramp up the speed until I've gone through all these phases. Now I can think about ramping speed up. If I had stopped trying to think about speed with my previous action, I'm throwing more interference into the mix. I'm not utilizing the variables that are absolutely determining the speed. I'm gonna get more lost. Conceptually, it's gonna throw me an absolute curveball. I'm gonna start looking for stuff. I'm gonna start looking for faults and fixes because something's broken feeling like I'm not doing something. What should I be doing? What do I need to do? Tell me what I need to do. Nobody can tell you, you've got to find it yourself. So now this is actually going to let me release with more speed. And now it's going higher. I'm releasing out a little bit later here. The awareness through just moving as opposed to instructing yourself to move getting a feel of where these forces are coming from, then being explorative in your practice with the timing, getting your feedback to affirm your movement as well. There's a time and place for that, but also when you're just working through movement, don't get emotionally connected to the shot you're playing, because it can really sidetrack your practice very quickly, and it becomes just counterproductive. We've all had those sessions where you hit shots and it's been a bit of a waste of time, hasn't it? So. Yeah, what's interesting is I'm getting more feedback now with my hands and the end of the chain by not actually thinking about it. It's more of an enhanced awareness. With my attention on the use of the ground, I'm starting to feel these forces, but I'm just feeling the reaction. It's actually amplifying the sensitivity at the end of the chain, getting more feedback. I could really feel the, the club. Because it's more involuntary, this is reacting, and I can feel the weight of it. I can actually start to feel where this is in space in relation to me. So I'm going to step back and just give myself a little bit of a reminder. Feel that. So the strikes there, the flights there, very neutral, hints of draw. Now I've got ball flight to work with, feedback of the divot, low point, the whole thing's becoming so much more enriched. And I'm starting to create really powerful memories and I can go there again and again and again. And this is how we start to practice, guys. This is a practice program that we need to apply every time we go to continue our development and improvement in this game. We're fostering this natural evolution through this continual self-optimization loop because we've got the toolkit in place. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks, Sam. Brilliant, mate. Thanks, guys, for watching. Thank you to the West End. Thank you to the Abu National Golf Club. Looking forward to a fantastic week. Let us know how you get on with your practice. Drop your comments below. We'll see you soon. Cheers, guys.